Thank you for being here. Uh, before we start, I would just like to say uh, Darcy is a very good friend of uh, Stacy and mine. Uh, we acted together, and it is a pleasure uh, that we asked her to come here tonight, and uh, she flew in, and uh, thank you. The pleasure is truly mine. Thank, thank you, you for screaming. Um, the pleasure is so mine. I'm honored that you asked me. I love and adore you. Thank you. And it's so nice to meet you all tonight. Um, I would fly anywhere for you, sir. Chicago's a, a, a treat. Thank you. <laughs> What's that? Well, oops, I guess you're not talking to me. <laughs> um, OK, so once we get used to our voices on this microphone, which I think will happen soon, um, then we'll calm down and we'll talk. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming out. I would like to talk about my friend Henry Winkler's beautiful new book, Being Henry, The Fonz, and Beyond. Um, I read this book this week, and it was... Um, I think I've told you, I, I, we've, we've been hanging out today and I've been trying not to talk to him and Stacy, his wonderful wife, about the book because I want to talk about it with you guys. But um, I, it was, it is funny. Thank you. It is moving. Thank you. I cried a lot, a lot. I took a picture of myself crying, which I never do. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, um, I cannot wait for you all to read it. It's just wonderful. You're here because you love Henry and you're going to get to know Henry so much, so much more and so much more intimately. And it's just wonderful. Thank I, you. I love it. And Thank I can't you. wait for you all to read it and hey, tell all too. your friends. I just, uh, I, I can't wait either. And there, yeah, <laughs> I can't wait for you to write a big email to all your friends with the link in the email bottom saying click here to order. I don't know. Maybe. That'd be nice, right? Okay. I would never. <laughs> I would never presume. Um, okay. So I have gotten to know Henry um, over the last... We, we, um, we were on the show Barry together, so it's been about seven years. Um, I, we were, we, I'm just going to talk about Henry for a little bit, and then we can talk about the book. We were sort of instantly friends. Yes. I would say not even sort of. We, we met. Yes. And we bonded very yes. quickly. We did. And, um, you were my assistant in the, the first year of Barry. Right. You were Jean Cousinow's assistant. Yes, and Natalie And then somehow Greer. that faded into I don't know where. I, <laughs> I don't know where And either. then you became uh, Sarah Goldberg's yes. assistant. Yes, okay. Sally's assistant. That's right. You were everybody's assistant. I was everybody's assistant. You were assistant. Bill Hader's assistant in, in real, real life. In real life, yeah. yes. That's right. Um, yes, yeah, so we, we sort of... Um, we. There's so many fun stories about Barry, and, and we have a while, so we'll talk about some of them. But um, it was I, I, the the way you sort of took me under your wing and became my dear, dear friend so quickly has been one of the most remor rewarding relationships of my entire life. And and um, I want to tell you guys a few things. I want to tell you what type of friend Henry is. Okay, um, Henry is the type of friend, and Stacy too. Stacy Wingler, who is here, who I adore and love, and um, you'll you'll get to know her well in the book as well. Um, Henry is the type of friend who calls you and, and checks in. He especially called me a lot during COVID when I was really lonely and missing friends. And we, we, we had more phone calls than maybe anyone in my life. And it was really, really uh, meaningful to me. Henry is the type of friend that when you're leaving his house, you're getting in your car, he says, wait, wait. And he runs inside goes in the backyard, clips a few roses from his beautiful rose bushes, wraps them in paper and tinfoil and brings them out to your car. Henry is the type of friend that when you tell him that you are going to be on Broadway for the first time, he says, oh my fucking God, <laughs> Broadway. Henry is the type of friend that when you're on Broadway, he checks in with you every single Monday when you don't have a show to see how that week went during rehearsals, during the show, asks where you are in rehearsals, is the tape on the floor, are you gelling with the cast, have you memorized your lines? It was 
one of the, uh, in the time that I was doing Broadway, it was one of the things I looked forward to the most. It, it, again, it made it so much more and special. And also the, the, the kind of friend that Stacy and I went and saw you. Yeah, you did. And thoroughly enjoyed you up on that stage. You That's... wiped the stage clean. <laughs> you know, there was nobody else on that stage but you. You really, see, this is the kind of thing is. I'm telling you, um, there's so many more. Um, what else? Okay, what else I'm gonna there? tell you more. Henry is the type of friend that when you're having trouble while you're doing a, a project, play, a movie, a TV show, and you're doubting yourself, he looks you in the eye and says, you know. And he made me write it down on a post-it note and put it on my mirror so that every day I could look in the mirror and think to myself, I know. And it really did help me. You. Henry and Stacy are the type of friends that when you move into a new place or you start a new project, they send you the biggest orchid plant you could possibly imagine. Those are orchids, right? Yes, they are. They're the... I've never... I've never seen... And they were real. They were not silk. No, they're real. Yeah. And a man, not just a delivery guy, maybe the guy who planted the damn plant himself I, delivers it to All you. the way from Thailand. It's incredible. <laughs> we sent him. It's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, okay, Henry is the type of show... Uh, no, Henry is the type of friend. Thank you. That um, when I was sort of doing my first couple of award shows, which can be very overwhelming, and I'm part of a, a cast, I'm not nominated for anything, Henry, when he saw me on the red carpet, linked arms with me and took me to each one of his interviews. And this is Henry Winkler, so he's in the prime time spot. He's nominated for things. They want to talk to him. They don't want to talk to this scrub. But because he's bringing me to each and every interview, I got to be, I got to be <laughs> on TV. <laughs> and that was not, that you didn't, that was not not on purpose. You knew what you were doing. I knew what I was doing. And it was, it was yeah. again, very meaningful Yeah, I thought it would me. make me look good. <laughs> Henry is the type of friend that when your husband goes out of town and you have just moved into a big, scary new house and you're afraid to sleep there alone, Henry and Stacy say, well, you'll be staying at our house. Well, you will absolutely be staying at our house. You're not staying in that house alone. You'll come to our house. And they, you guys... When I went into my little room, my little room, it's a beautiful house, I'm sure you can imagine, there was toothpaste on the, on, the, on, the, on the sink. There was a fresh toothbrush. There was a towel. There was gum. There was candy. There was water. They had the TV on a channel that they thought I might enjoy. I mean, every detail uh, was because thought of. Because you never know when you need to be a manager of a hotel. <laughs> it could happen like that, and it you did. know? And it did, and it does, and you know that. It was amazing. And then in the morning, we woke up. Henry made me coffee. We talked. I mean, this is just... What I'm saying is, this is a dear friend. What I'm also saying is, you may know that this is Hollywood's nicest man. I'm sort of doing this. Because when people say, isn't he just the nicest man you ever met? I almost... I almost want to... This is what I say. He's so much more than that. Nice is pretty easy, actually. And what a body. <laughs> Thank you. And what Thank you. a body. And that leads us to, let's talk about this book, shall we? Now, the book just came out this week. And people will be reading it for decades and centuries to come. But the fun thing about reading it this week is that it's this week, really, this month, let's say, is the 50th anniversary. The 50th anniversary of when you auditioned for and got a great little role in a show called Happy Days. 50 years. On and August 30th. When I auditioned, October, I only October. had six lines. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, it's true. I had hair down to my shoulders, and I had a gigantic sweat stain that it looked like the um, Hudson River uh, was flowing under my arm. And I, I walked into this room, 11 people, uh, the head of casting behind a very impressive desk, Millie Gussie at the time, uh, the head of uh, Paramount Casting, uh, Gary Marshall, uh, Ed Milkis, uh, Tom Miller from Milwaukee. Uh, that's why Happy Days was set there. Okay. And I was petrified because every actor in the waiting room was famous. Everybody I had seen on television. And then me. And uh, so I, I walked into the, into the room and I introduced myself. And there was a young man named Pasquale. And Pasquale was going to read with me. He was reading the other part. 
And I don't know what happened, but I, ha I was always able, I am always able to go with my instinct when it comes to my work. But in the beginning of my life, I could not be as authentic. And something snapped, and I just looked at Pasquale, <laughs> and I said, don't you look at me like that. <laughs> Do not look me in the eye, buddy. All right, let's start. And then we were done. I flipped the script in the air. I sauntered out of the room. And on my birthday, October 30th, 1973, they called and said, would you like to play this role? And I said, I would. Yeah. I would. Now my parents call very short Germans. <laughs> And they call and my, they say, you know, they're going to take you, your sister, and what's his name? They never actually called my sister's first husband by his first name. <laughs> Lovely people. And they're taking you, your sister, and what's his name on a trip to Europe because we don't know how long they're going to be around. Now, that was 1973. My mother, bless her soul, died in 1989. But <laughs> they don't know how long they're going to be around. And I said, I can't come. Because I, I just got a small role on a, on a show in, uh, in Hollywood. And my mother said, it, I, it was like yesterday. <laughs> oh, this is great. Here, tell your father. Uh, yep. I um. Yes, the parents, the parents. they it, it, I, I, I can't wait for you to read the book. Is all I'm saying. Um, now, when you accepted the role of the Fonz, of Arthur Fonzarelli, we all know him well. I, I, do you remember you, you had a conversation with whoever it was that offered you the role, and you said something about, as long as I can... Show the emotion. Thank you. That, uh, you know, when he takes off his jacket, eventually uh, he has got, uh, who's he going to be cool for in his apartment? And they said yes, and I said yes, and I had the, the greatest time. And, uh, you know, I, I said, uh, hey, for 10 years. <laughs> Not and bad. it was, like, really easy to memorize. <laughs> And then I added my own word, uh, which came from my favorite sport at the time. Whoa. <laughs> Your own and, word. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A. A. And whoa. But the reason that it was great to have the words is because I could reduce paragraphs to sound. You know, you, I, I could talk through the sound. Like, uh, you know, hey, she is so beautiful. Hey, I'm hungry. Hey, do not mess with me. And so, because you cannot be cool when you talk that much, right. unlike me in my real life. That's right. So just saying the word, yeah. you conveyed so much emotion. Absolutely. Yes, most, most actors want more, more, more words, but you said less, less, yes. less. Thank Amazing. You. And Thank part you. of that I'm imagining is you went to school at Emerson and Yale Drama. All right. All right. So, I got into Yale. I applied to 28 colleges. I got into one, uh, Emerson College in Boston. Uh, I am in the bottom 3% academically in America. Uh, that is quantified. And I, I took geometry for four years, same course. <laughs> I took it in regular school. I took it summer school, regular school, summer school, regular school, summer school, regular school, summer school. And I finally passed it in the summer of 1963 with a D minus. Mm. If I did not get that D minus, I could not go to Emerson in Boston. Yeah. And I want to just say, I, I, I like to stand I up. I know, I love it. I, I don't know why. I had to take that much geometry because from that day in August of 1963 until tonight, not one person has ever said hypotenuse to me. <laughs> what were they thinking? So I finally figured out that we have to teach our children how they learn, not what we think they should learn. And if there are young people in this audience, if you are still going to school, I want to say to you now, 
How you learn and how difficult it is has nothing to do with how brilliant you are. That's so well said. And, and I imagine it took a long time for you to get to that point. That's yes. such a, I mean, that's such a profound... I, I felt I was stupid until about last Tuesday. <laughs> what changed? <laughs> yeah, I, but, you know, my parents called me Dumme Hund. For those of you who don't speak German, that means dumb dog. Very lovely, very lovely people. I... Uh, uh, you know, my teachers, every, all the adults in my life said I was lazy and stupid, that I would never um, uh, meet my dream. I would never achieve much. Mm. And I, I didn't want to be stupid. I didn't think I was stupid. Uh, but yet, you, you know, you identify, well, I, if they say it, it must be true. So you think it. And so it completely cuts off your ability to try something that you think is going to make you look dumb or, or, you know, just you will not achieve. So this is another lesson that I have learned in my life. I'm here to tell you, and I, 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 I don't mean to be presumptuous, every single person in this room is powerful. I know this, you, some of you don't know your power, some of you haven't tasted, some of you are afraid, some of you absolutely have been in touch with your power. But here it is, you do not know what you can achieve until you just put one foot in front of the other. Writing books. Mm. I, I had trouble getting hired um, because, you know, I was the Fonz. Right. Uh, and w they would say, he is so funny. He is a wonderful, he's one, but he was the Fonz. Typecast, yeah. yeah. And so the, uh, a friend of mine said, write books for children about your learning challenges. And I said, well, I can't do that because I'm learning challenged. Right. <laughs> and he said, I'll introduce you to my friend, Lynn, who knows everything about children's books. And I want to tell you that Duma Hunt... Mm. Uh, uh, about 16 days ago, our latest children's book came out, and uh, uh, that makes 39. That's a lot of books. Yeah, that's amazing. And I, I'm telling you, I mention it only because I absolutely knew I couldn't do it until I just tried. Yeah. And you figure it out. There's a couple... A couple that that, that um, message really stuck out in the book to me. It's such it's such a hard thing to sort of um, to grasp. You said you said the schizophrenia of this is when you get a big opportunity. The schizophrenia of, of um, are you crazy? How dare you? And then finally, shut up and just try it. That really it's true. Yeah, it's true. And so many times, I did a play on Broadway in 2000. Neil Simon, the most prolific playwright. First, he asked me to come downtown in L.A. and read his play out loud so he could hear it. Because his genius was that uh, he would, uh, during preview, rewrite it. We started with uh, uh, version four and opened on Broadway with version 11. Wow. It, well, I'm telling you, it was amazing. <laughs> But I said, how can I read out loud? I can't read at all. How am I going to read out loud for Neil Simon? And I was so willing to say no to so many things, convinced I couldn't do it. And finally, I just said, you know what? I am bored with just saying no. Just shut up and try it. Shut up and, try it. and we ran for nine months with the great uh, late John Ritter. The dinner party. Who was party. so funny. So funny. Um, you say um, you can't catch a fish unless your fly is in the water. Yeah, well, that, I love fly fishing. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, Stacy and I go at least once a year. It is like a washing machine for your brain. <laughs> it is the, the lapping of the water and the beauty that is around you. And you can only concentrate on that fly and you have a fourth of a second as the fish takes your fly and realizes it's not the real thing and spits it out. And then you have to be in line. You have to be in tune with the trout. 
It goes, you bring it back. It goes, you bring it back. Then you take a picture, you give it a kiss. I like to sign a laminated picture of the Fonz, put it in its mouth. I am hanging in nests all over the West. I believe it. Oh. I would see it. I love it. But and now here's a question. On average, who catches bigger fish? You okay, my wife does, but let's not talk about that. Just curious. I don't know what it is, I'm but and, and we fish in separate boats because there were a lot of arguments. <laughs> I, you know, there, there are rules. Uh, the guide sits in the middle of the boat. The person in the front has all of the water in the front all the way up to the oar. The person in the back has up to the oar and all the way behind in the back of the river. <laughs> But sometimes my wife's water <laughs> looks so fishy, my fly, well, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> and so now we, we fish in separate boats and meet for lunch. That's right. And this, this, this marriage has been for how many years? Well, we have been married for 45 so years. So we're gonna trust that that's a good way to make it work. I'm telling you, I think the ear is the center of all relationships mm. uh, and uh, separate boats. <laughs> Good advice. Now, speaking of our darling Stacy, yes. um, Stacy's point of view is a very fun and unexpected part of this book. I've, mm -hmm. I've never, you'll see, I, I don't want to, it's hard, I don't want to give things away, but I kind of want to talk about it. But you can. Okay. Um, <laughs> so there, it, I've never done this with a book before. I was reading the book. Uh, page by page, and then at one point, it switches over to Stacy's point of view. The font chains, it, it says Stacy. It's clearly from her, and I thought to myself, I know this is an audiobook. What, is Henry doing a voice for Stacy? What, I got, I got it. So I immediately downloaded it on Audible, and then I went back to the beginning, and I read each page while I listened to Henry's voice. It was really a kind of incredibly cool way to read the book. I would recommend it. But um, when Stacy's part starts, it's wonderful Stacy's voice. Yes. Now, yeah. Because the director said, would, um, would Stacy do this instead of hiring an actress? And I asked Stacy, and she just went right into the studio on her own and recorded her section Amazing. Of, the, of the book, her point of view. I was wondering, yes, if it took yeah. convincing. It sounds like it didn't. She got it. She got it. And did you, was any of what Stacy, did anything that Stacy? I never read what she wrote. Okay, well you should. Because <laughs> no, I, it was too scary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Can only imagine, God forbid, she said something that, and I would, I would have just made me cry. No, no, no. It's wonderful what no. she says. She, she's a, an unbelievably witty and yes. um, smart human being. Yes. Um, she, um, yes, she's, she's, I, I, I love her. I love you. You two, the, the, it's an aspirational and inspirational relationship, and yeah. I love you both. I can't wait to have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Were you, was there anyone in your life that you were nervous to read this book? Were you nervous for a better way no. of saying oh, it? Oh, yeah. you know what? Uh, I had a partner. Um, uh, when I was having trouble being hired, uh, I have a lawyer, Skip Brittenham III. Uh, and uh, name. Uh, yeah, I was his first client. Okay. Uh, and uh, Skip said, I'm going to start a production company for you. And I said, well, I can't do that because I am dyslexic. I don't, I, I know nothing about uh, business. Well, there are people who know what you don't know and you do what you know. So I had partners uh, who were legitimate uh, showrunners and creators and two of them, we couldn't find anything that really uh, clicked, uh -huh. that sold. And the third one, <laughs> was a man who was very creative and maybe the worst person I ever met on the, on the earth. Okay. And I didn't mince any words. And so uh, the book just came out, but I am pretty sure his children are going to come for me. I think so. Yeah, I think they might. I'm, I'm, I've, I've hired a guy. Uh, yeah. They probably know. Yeah. It sounds like. Yeah. It sounds they like. They must have known. Yes. Right? I mean, they lived with him. I, I mean, you know, you know who your parents are. I think that he married his brother's girlfriend when his brother went to the Korean War. Oh, no. But 
you know, that, lovely. Listen. Lovely. We're not judging anyone. I'm These surrounded just by just cozy. <laughs> um, now, um, one thing about the book and that maybe people would be surprised about is to um, read about your relationship with your parents. Yes. And I was... Um, I was sort of blown away with your honesty in this book and how real you were. Well, if you think that was honest, my wife was my secret weapon. She was my editor at home, and she said, hey, buddy, you've got to pull back on that. <laughs> and so I, I uh, took out a sentence or two. Yeah. But here it is. They, they were, um, uh, I, I joke about them, but they were really worse than, uh, than I tell you. You got to laugh uh, to keep from crying. You, know, you, you do. You do. Um, they were, uh, they were very, so here it is. I deeply respect that they had to leave their country and come to a new country. They had to learn a new language. My father started a business. We lived above our means, and I had a pretty good life. Uh, um, but here's what I don't, I can't reckon with. When you are a, a parent, and um, I, I know that you, you know this, the child comes full-blown. They come who they are and who they're going to be. And you have to see them and listen to them because I believe a herd child is a powerful child. And uh, so I promised Stacy and myself I would be a completely different parent and that my children could say what was on their mind, that I literally would see them. They would, my parents would yell at me and punish me, and I wasn't exactly sure what happened. It, I would walk into the room and they would start, and my brain would turn pink. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, actually, I meant gray. And then I would go into my room and I would listen to music, and sometimes I would listen to arias from opera because the music was so big, and it would calm me down, and my brain would return uh, back to normal. I had a problem. I was not an extension of who they were. I embarrassed them because I did not do well. They thought if I stayed at my desk long enough, I was going to get it. And uh, they didn't understand dyslexia. I understand that. But you do see your child has a problem. And then you say, I'm going to figure out how to make this easier, better, take care of it, some, or understand. Right. And they could not. They, they didn't have the capacity, and uh, that was tough. I bet. It was tough. You, you and I'm 78, and I have um, cleared myself of most of my rage, <laughs> but not all of but it. But not all of it. You know, in... No. And I still have a speck a little, left. And you got to keep a little bit, just for that yeah, extra. It could come out at any <laughs> moment. Um, you know, in the book, you talk about how you, you would make the decision when your parents would treat you badly. You, you would say to yourself, I will never parent like this. Yes. I will never parent my right. kids the way they parent right. me. But my big how question, my how question is, how... When you were a little guy, just a little kid, making your way through the world, did you not let their poison infect you? How did you become, because I know you're an amazing parent, I know your children, I know your, your wife, I know that you, you, are, you did what you hoped to do. You are a great dad. Thank you. But how did you not, you know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think maybe there is an emotional component to dyslexia. But also, I, I will tell you that um, uh, what I realized when I was working on the book, I worked with this wonderful man, James Kaplan. And, uh, you know, he would mold all my stories. We flew him to California. I didn't know this was my responsibility. Well. I thought I was getting a lot of money. And <laughs> it just, I flew him out twice. By I had book. to put him up in a hotel. I fed him three times a day. <laughs> this man was an eater. <laughs> but he also was lovely to work with. And when I looked at the whole book, I finally realized it literally was the journey from where I started being who I thought I should be to becoming a more authentic 
me, to mm -hmm. being who I am. And, you know, people would ask me all the time, so tell me, how is it to be cool? Tell me how to be cool. And I finally realized being your authentic self is powerful and you are cool. It is magnetic and it is, um, it is filled because once you know about yourself, you know about everybody. Yeah. Our exteriors are different, but our core is the same. And uh, I, I just had a thought when, with, my, with my parents, my little self, was so like in shock yeah. that I literally covered it over mm -hmm. with like Chernobyl thickness of cement. Yeah. And I, I, um, I started about eight or nine years ago with a, uh, uh, a therapist, a talking doctor. And I, uh, if I were to give her a gift, this woman, I would have to give her a gift the size of a skyscraper <laughs> because she literally helped me um, uh, jackhammer of fissions open in the cement, <laughs> you know, so yeah. that like a little, little um, uh, plant would come up now, right. and I am getting to be yeah. a full garden uh, instead of who I imagined you're supposed to be. And when, when that was a long answer. Oh, it was so good though. Yes, we can. When, when you think about, you know, you starting to... Um, I had a lot of coffee. I know, it was... Yeah. We're, we're jacked up. It's great, we're buzzing. Um, but I, how much of that do you think, this sort of like um, realizing who you are and, and how much of that is the shrink? And how much of that is... An amazing therapist, I think. She's been she an is. amazing therapist. She is wonderful. But how much of that she is... She dresses well. Does she? Yeah. Gotta see this Very lady. Very forward thinking. Ooh, so yeah. she's... Okay, I... I I'd love to meet her. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, how much... What? I want to just tell you, the, the very first day I, I met this doctor, I sat down and I went, hi, Henry, hi, I'm so happy I'm here. So, do you have any children? And she said, how will that help you? <laughs> I have not asked her another question. <laughs> I think, I think about a couple of weeks ago, I found out she doesn't like peanut butter. <laughs> After years. Yeah. So how much of that is her? It sounds like she's incredible. And how much of that is you being at a place in your life where you're sort of ready? I was at a place. That's a great question. Thanks. I was at a place where I could hear yeah. her and I could go with her on the journey. I was not, I, I had a therapist years ago who after a, a few months said, hey, look, um, we're at the end of our session, thanks for coming, would you read a script that I... I said, it was so nice to see you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Forever. Yeah. This woman literally, um, uh, it might be me, but I did not know that me until she led me or helped me get to that me. That's amazing. Yeah. The, maybe the perfect time to meet yeah, her. Yeah, you know what? My, you know, I knew things intellectually. I knew I was presumptuous. I would tell people great things that I knew. Yeah. And then the bottom of my brain was soldered shut. So none of what was here ever filtered into my whole body. You know when you have coffee in the morning, if, if you drink coffee or tea, and you put like cream in it, and the cream mm. swirls around the liquid and, and, and fills up the cup? My thoughts never swirled yeah. until recently. That's amazing. It's, I mean, I, I, I know, I know. I just felt a swirl. I was funny. acting out the swirl. I, <laughs> I, um, I was think I thought about this so much when I was reading the book and, and when we were just talking to you over the years, the way, you know, you've, you've been a public person now for 50 years and you have this incredible reputation um, in, in, you know, in the community, in, in the business, but also in literally in the world, which is a funny thing to say, but true. So it's funny to read this book where you're sort of looking back and, and um, it's refreshing, but to, to look, looking back on things that you wish you had done differently or things you didn't like about yourself or you wish you had handled this differently or that differently, 
Because you were still, you've been so well loved and, and um, respected. Yeah, but you know, it, it, not until recently could I let yeah. that love in yeah. unless uh, uh, my children and my puppies. Mm. But that was basically it. Yeah. And um, I left uh, Stacy um, always just on the fringe. Mm -hmm. I, I love her very much. I, I, I appreciate and respect her very much, but I was not able, yeah. uh, I was like, uh, you stopped at the, right. you know, like, like I had a, a barrier, a barrier. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then finally I can, um, it, it is an amazing thing. My, I am amazed myself. Yeah. That is incredible. I love it. Um, I want what, you took a breath. You said... No, I, I, I was just thinking that uh, I always appreciated, I heard what people were saying to me. Mm -hmm. I felt the warmth, mm -hmm. but they couldn't possibly be saying this about me. I kept looking to see who they were talking to, <laughs> do you know? And yeah. it, it's no joke. I mean, what I'm telling you is, is, the, is the actuality of it yeah. now, I can enjoy um, sharing the moment with whoever yeah. it is in whatever language they're telling me. I see that. I've seen it. I, I see that. I, I it's um it's inspiring to me. I love it. Thank I, you. It's one of my favorite things about you. Thank um, you. I have so many questions in so little time. I have pages of questions. Luckily, I can ask you later. <laughs> um, but I, <laughs> I um. I know also that the audience has a lot of questions. So I'm going to just sort of, I, I want to talk about Barry. Oh, have us back, won't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, um, I, um, I'm going to ask you some, some sort of lightning ground questions. These are just some top of the brain. Okay. Maybe, you're, maybe you're saying a word. Maybe okay. you're saying a sentence. Okay. Okay, I'm going to say, ready? Here we go. Just free your, free your mind. Best concert. Best concert, I love music, but I can't make music. I use music when I'm memorizing uh, a monologue. Uh, uh, and I, I, I'm, this is not lightning, but. <laughs> but I, I have uh, Bruno, Bruno Mars and uh, Bruce Springsteen, you know, oh my God. Uh, uh, the, and uh, Brandy Carlisle. I don't know if you know, oh my God, Brandy Carlisle. So Stacy and I just went to Brandy Carlisle's concert and I could not leave the venue until I hugged Brandy Carlisle. And she had friends with her. Annie Lennox sang. Oh my God, with such power, my hair, like, and we were like, and, and all, the last friend was Joni Mitchell. Wow. Just had her 80th birthday. Okay, so I go backstage, I finally get to hug Brandy Carlisle, and, Bra and, and, and Joni Mitchell is, sin is sitting in a, a dressing room. And uh, I walked up and I said, uh, uh, Miss Mitchell, I am Henry Winkler. I, and she, I know who you are. <laughs> I said, and this is my wife, Stacy. And she went, oh, so you married the Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 That's really good. What That's else really could good. go? Yeah, that was it. Oh, amazing. Um, I have more, but but okay. I, I want. Okay. Um, and okay. Yummiest cake. Yummiest cake. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, a. Uh, <laughs> I can do this really quickly. I can. A chocolate bun cake, no icing, with mushy uh, chocolate chips. Great. And yeah. your. Banana bread. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do really make a good, good banana bread. Butter? I do make a good banana oh. bread. Um, okay. Uh, favorite Thanksgiving food. Okay. 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 I love Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. Favorite holiday, I think. But I wait 364 days a year for the sandwich the next day. Um. Wonder bread, mayo, um, fried stuffing. And a cranberry sauce right out of the can. Cannot stand those little berries. Um, <laughs> turkey, a little more mayo. Smoosh it, cut it. Oh my God. 
Okay. This, the list goes on, but I think, I think this, will, this answer will not be one word, so I'm just going to say Patrick Mahomes. Not a sports person. Okay, then no doing, answer, I guess. No, doing, I guess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> not, uh, no, not, no, I'm just not kidding. Not a sports person, yeah. but... Um, uh, I was on Rich Eisen's uh, talk show. Uh, he is a sports uh, uh, show. And uh, while he is talking to me about the last season of Barry, uh, I just blurted out, do you know Patrick Mahomes? Because I, I loved, I watch football sometimes with my son and his friends, and I just think he's so improvisorial. And I think he is great, and if you ever meet him, say hi. So he played that for Patrick Mahomes. And Patrick Mahomes invited me to see him play at SoFi Stadium against the Chargers in LA. I'm invited on the field. Oh my God, I'm standing there and I am um, five, six and a half. And I'm telling you, all of a sudden this behemoth comes running across the field with a smile on his face and he says, I, he said, I have a surprise for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Honest to God. He gives me his jersey signed. I'm 78, I'm now 12. <laughs> And I, so uh, this uh, Super Bowl, uh, in my living room, I wore the jersey. I'm sure that's why they won. And uh, I said, you know what? There is always a place at our table for you and your family. Uh, you can have like a stuffed chicken with ricotta and spinach, a reduction uh, um, a sauce, and it, it's delicious. And uh, he's running off now. He's talking to me like we're meeting, you know, and we're, we're meeting in the supermarket. And he's going to be beaten to a pulp in a minute. And um, he's running off. He turns around. He said, I'm going to take you up on that dinner. He is a fibber. <laughs> sad ending to that story. It's a really fun story and now we're all so sad. Well, the night is young. We don't know. Maybe he'll call you before I Thanksgiving. Think so. I think he might. I think he might. Um, okay, like I said, I have 5,000 more questions, but, but I know you guys do too. So, um, okay, so can uh, if there is somebody in charge of the lights, could we? Do, yes. Oh. So I can wow. see everybody. There are people out there. Hi. Hi. Okay. So oh, and everybody's so there is good a person, There is a person who has a microphone. Yes. And hello. And if you have a question, that person is going to come and find you. Yes, we have so, a few different people in the house with microphones, so please raise your hands high. If you have a question, we do ask that you keep commentary and stories to a minimum. minimum. Try to keep it to questions only so we can get to as many as possible with the time we have remaining. So our first question comes from yep, down in the right front, right to your right. Hi, what Hi. is your name? My name is Meredith. Hi, Meredith. It's nice to meet you. I'm actually asking for Kylie, who's sitting here. She's a student with dyslexia, and we're parents of students with dyslexia. So it's a two-part question. Her question is, what was your biggest struggle? And from the parent perspective, if you think back to school and how miserable it was, what could your parents at school... What be? was my favorite struggle? Biggest struggle. Biggest struggle. My, okay, okay, okay. And then what could everybody have done Meredith? better for you? Meredith? Yes. I was bad in English, I was bad in math, I was bad in science. I was bad in history, I was great at lunch. <laughs> but Meredith, I'm telling you now, school is the law. So you have to go to school and you do the best you can. As long as you try, as long as our children tried, whatever the grade was that came home did not matter. As long as they tried. And I want to tell you, if you, your entire uh, responsibility is to believe that you are as wonderful as you are. Because when you are done with school, when it is behind you, you will soar like an eagle. In the balcony, please. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm okay. Over, I'm what over is your here. name? Oh, here, Jenna. Hi, Jenna. 
Uh, my question is for Jean Cousineau's character, were you inspired by any acting teacher you might have had? I had 14 teachers. Uh, and uh, that was in college and in graduate school. I had the nerve to apply to the Yale School of Drama being the dummy I was. And I got in. And uh, so he was also based on a, an acting teacher in LA who was not supposed to be, I never had him, but he was not supposed to be such a nice person. As a matter of fact, I think he asked his students who were barely scraping together enough money to take his class to buy his artwork. <laughs> Then you put all of that inside and uh, you spin it around. Then you've got great creators like Bill Hader and Alec Berg. You've got great acting partners. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> great acting partners. And, uh, and then he comes out. And uh, you, you know, he was supposed to be a total asshole. And I, then I kind of liked a student, or I thought, oh, um, you know, and they said, oh, yeah, we could write to where you're going also. And so then all of a sudden, Jean came out. And I have to tell you, I, I'm not sure I will ever have something as wonderful to play in my life again. Mm. Yes. Yes, your next question's to the left here. Yes. Pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you for you. being here tonight. Thank I've, you. What is your name? My name is Phil Smith. I've been a Shriner uh, for 30 years next year, Chicago Shriners. And I just want to tell you I've been active in the Shriners hospitals. Uh, I'm going to recommend that your books are added to our rapport oh, at wow. the hospital. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for everything you do for the kids. Thank you. And uh, I just, you know, one of the lines I remember when you were in the Fonz when I was a little kid was you walked in and said, uh, hey, just want to let you know there's a man for every woman, and for some there are more. You remember that line? <laughs> Believe me, that was my imagination. <laughs> okay, uh, we actually have a question. Okay, one sec. That's true, that's true. Aaron. Hi. Hi, lovely to meet you. Good to Hi, see Aaron. You Hi. For all the shows, which I can't, of course, know what you can or can't talk about, what have been some favorite co-stars? Wow, that is a good question. Um, Darcy, for sure. <laughs> Ron Howard was an amazing acting partner. When I started Happy Days, I was 27 years old. I was the oldest teenager. He was 18. He was so wise. You know, when we first uh, we were first working together, um, uh, I, I couldn't uh, do a joke. I couldn't make it work. And you know, I was an actor from New York. I was I had drama school. You know, and I just was pounding my script. I was really, really angry. And he put his arm around me, ten years younger, walked me to the back of the soundstage, and he said, "You know." I think the writers are working as hard as they can. I wouldn't hit my script. <laughs> I said, Ron, I will never hit my script as long as I live again. And we, we are, uh, he is like my brother. You know, so to pick a co-star, uh, Bill Hader. Oh my God. Um, you know, it, it, I cannot pick somebody. I am so grateful that I am still living my dream that I had on 78th and Broadway, lying in bed thinking, am I ever going to be able to do this? And I am doing it. Oh my God. I, okay, now these, none of these questions are for me, but I have to say, Henry is an actor's actor. He is, he, he, you, we all know his name, we all know his face. He could act like a star, he could act like a snob, he could act like a diva. He is the best acting partner you could possibly have. He is wow. an ensemble member. Thank you. And, 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 and because he's at the top of the, the call Darcy list. Darcy Carden, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, because, because you are the way you are on every show that you work on, that trickles down to everybody. Thank and you. you really set the tone and, and you teach us all how to be. Thank you. I love you. Wow. Um, we've got a question back here at the back oh, yeah, of the no, house. No, no, wait a minute. There was one up there, right? That I, I missed because I, we, yeah. we talked to Aaron, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. okay. 
Um, what is uh, your name? My name is Michelle Thorne. Hi, um, Michelle. From near Milwaukee, so of course, <laughs> excited to see the fans. You and my um, statue. Yeah, right, that's right, yes, right. Um, I was doing some research and uh, came upon a picture of you and your wife, Stacy, uh, at an event, I think it was at Marlo Thomas's house, supporting the Equal Rights Amendment in yes. the late 70s. Yes. And I was wondering if you would be so kind as to comment on uh, why you supported the ERA. I could not imagine not. I cannot imagine the, the thought that, uh, that anybody is uh, smarter than, better than, more powerful than, uh, a, a man and a woman, a woman should have equal rights. It is insane that we live in the greatest country in the world. Now, when I went to that event, our daughter Zoe was just born. And I took her out with me when I made my speech. And I said, I am here because I want Zoe to feel she could run for president. And that is why I thought it was so important to be there. OK, we have a, a question back here. She's been waiting to ask this. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Noah, and I have dyslexia, and I was wondering, how did you get through when you knew people were talking behind your back? Okay, so here it is. People talk behind your back because they don't feel really good about themselves. So your job is to feel good about yourself. You will not see these people again. You're going to grow up. They're not going to be in your vicinity. <laughs> I want to tell you, I have had people say to me uh, when I got a part in a play in school, I should have gotten that part. I am better than you are. And I want to ask you, where are they now? <laughs> that was great. Great question. Okay, I'm going to go right here. Uh, uh, sir, do I, uh, whoever has the question. What is your question? Um, yeah, I would, my name is Dan. It's an honor to meet you. I would like to know, at the time you were the Fonz and you jumped the shark on the water skis, <laughs> did you actually have any common knowledge that Happy Days was going downward? Or <laughs> any? Got it. Good question. So, fair question, fair my question. My father told me to tell Gary Marshall, tell him you water ski. Dad, I'm not going to tell him I water ski. Tell him you water ski. It's like we were invited to the White House. My father said, take cake. <laughs> I said, it's not funny. This man, I'm not. So uh, I finally told Gary, I said, you know what my father wants you to know? I water ski. <laughs> okay, I told you, fine. All of a sudden, I'm on water skis. <laughs> so I couldn't jump the shark because uh, I, the, if I got hurt, there was no backup. But I did do all the water skiing, and if you watch the episode, I let go of the rope, and I ski up onto the beach, and I step out of my water skis, and I, they, they freeze flame frame on my smile. <laughs> half, that, half that smile is the Fonz going, hey, I made it. <laughs> the other half is Henry going, holy mackerel, you made it. <laughs> But we were number one for about four years or five years after I jumped the shark. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a lovely man was in college and he and his friend thought it up. They had a book and a board game and this is America and they should live in health. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one last question over to your left here. My left. Hello. <laughs> Hi, my name is Michelle. Hi, Hi Michelle. Michelle. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. I'm halfway through your book, and I'm like, wow, this guy has done some stuff. Yeah. I want to know, what is your secret to reinventing yourself? Good question. Okay. I mean, it's 
No, no, Wait no. till you get to some of the, you're like, he did that too? Yeah, yeah. He did that? I, I'm like, okay. Who? How many are? Are you a robot? No. <laughs> Not Michelle, a robot. Michelle, I'm telling you, that is the secret. If I can pass anything on to you, and I only found this out by living it. There was a time when it was really difficult to get a job as an actor, uh, and so then I became a producer, and I didn't know what I was doing. And I, I the first show we did was MacGyver. And then it, it ran for seven years, and in its new iteration, it ran for five. I didn't know I could do that job. And then uh, later on, I, I had a real a lot of trouble, and somebody said, write children's books for your, about your dyslexia. And all of a sudden, um, this is my um, 41st book. Now, you, I, you don't know what you can accomplish until you just try. And there is no time better than exactly now, at this moment. I'm not kidding. You're, oh, I'm, I'm too old. Oh, well, I'm too busy. I, I, I've got too much going. My work won't let me. I, I, you know what? It's too hard. All of that stuff is not true. What is true is that you get to do what you want to do that you didn't know you could. And then you find out you can. And it is great. And I would just like to say, we are so happy that you came here tonight and that you listened because my parents never did. Thank you, Thank you so much, Thank everybody. You. Thank you so Don't much. Don't we just love them?